let's review the four main pages you'll use over the course of your REDCap project. When you're in production, the landing page will be the project homepage. This has quick links to a lot of back-end tasks, such as exporting data, running reports, and managing users. The other functionality page has a lot of useful features that you might use over the course of your REDCap project. For example, you can use this page to make a copy of your project. This makes an exact duplicate of the project, including users and project records. You can use this feature if you're making a second project that is very similar to your first project. Instead of rewriting the project, you only have to make small modifications. You can also use this to test out large changes in the project, to see how they would affect your data, or to preview how the project would look before making changes to your main project database. You can download a backup of the project as an XML file, including metadata for the project setup, the data dictionary, and collected data. You can also use these XML files when you're creating new REDCap projects. Under Project Management, you have three options. Delete the project completely, erase all the data in the project, or archive the project. This moves the project off your list of My Projects so that it doesn't clutter the page. When your project's in production, you'll also have the option to move the project to inactive status. You can still run reports and export data, but you'll no longer be able to enter new data into the project. The Project Revision History page largely takes effect once your project is in production mode. Every time you make a change to your project in production mode, REDCap automatically saves a copy of the previous data dictionary. This way, if you no longer want the change, you can easily backtrack. In the Online Designer, you can also create a snapshot of the project that will be stored in revision history. If you make large changes while in development, REDCap will have an earlier saved copy of the dictionary so you can backtrack in case you overwrite something. While your project is in development, your landing page is the Project Setup page. In the main project settings, you can enable surveys and longitudinal data collection within the project. You can also change the project title, purpose, and any additional project notes. Design your data collection instruments will be covered in later videos. Enable optional modules and customizations allows you to add or remove some additional features that you could use while you're in REDCap. For example, by default, all records are auto-numbered, meaning REDCap will just assign each record 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, unless you turn it off and tell it you want to number your records manually. You can also turn on repeatable instruments here. Under Additional Customizations, you can set a custom record label. By default, the record label is just the record ID, but you can also manually insert information. In any record where the participant has supplied their first and last name, you can insert the information from that field into the record label so you can easily find the participants. If you want to have more than one unique field, you can define that here. Or you can order records by a field other than the record ID. By default, the field comment log and the data history widget will be enabled. This allows you to better manage the data in your project. You can also display a today slash now button next to all date time fields. Setup Project Bookmarks allows you to create quick bookmarks stored on the left-hand menu that let you jump to pages either inside or outside of the project. User rights and permissions are how you add and manage the users on your project. To add a new user, go to the User Rights page and enter their REDCap username under Add New Users. If you don't know their exact username, start typing to see suggested users. Then, click Add with Custom Rights, 
to select their privileges and choose how long they have access to your project. Project Design and Setup, User Rights, and Data Access Group's privileges should only be given to people who actually need those rights in your project. Project Design and Setup allows people to modify the data dictionary and the general design and setup. User Rights is the ability to add and remove users from the project and to change what individual users can do within the project. Data access groups are similar to user rights, but on a group level. Next, define what rights a user has for exporting data. No right, de-identified, remove all tagged identifier fields, or full rights to export the full data set. De-identified is the default option and means that all tagged identifier fields are removed. Other privileges include the ability to use the calendar tool, import data en masse, look at the file log, or access things stored in the file repository. Next, you can give users access to the RedCap mobile app. The mobile app is a completely separate application that does not give full access to RedCap. It is designed to collect data offline that can be synced with your project later. Next, you can give users the ability to create, rename, and delete records, and say whether or not they can lock or unlock records. If a record is locked, none of the information in it can be changed. Finally, choose the data entry rights for each individual form in your project. You can say that someone can't access a form at all, that they can only read it, or that they can read and edit. For surveys, you can choose if they can edit survey responses. When you're done, click Add User. If you have many people in your project who are all going to be doing similar things, you can create a role, such as Data Entry Role, that has a specific set of rights. Then, instead of having to add each person individually and check off all the boxes, you can assign them to that role and everyone will have the same rights. Data access groups are something that are largely used on multi-site projects to create a number of different groups. Once assigned, they will only be able to see the data that those at their specific site entered. They will not be able to see the information for any other site to better manage project access at each site. Now, let's look back at the project setup page. After you've set up your forms, customized your project, and added all your users, it's important to test your project by adding practice records. If you're using surveys, send out practice surveys to yourself or to your colleagues. If you're using a longitudinal project, make sure that you've tried doing data entry in all or at least many different events. If you're working with other people on your project, have them test it as well. They might be able to tell you if there's anything that will be a problem for them. Finally, use the Data Dictionary Checker on our REDCap guide to see if it meets best practice standards. Once you've tested your project thoroughly and are ready to move to production, click on the Move to Production button. You have the option to keep any data that you've entered so far or delete test records. Once you hit the Yes Move to Production Status button, REDCap will send an email to the administrators. If your project requires IRB approval, we'll ask you to provide the IRB approval letter for the project. Once we have the form, or if your project doesn't require one, we'll move the project to production and you'll be ready to begin collecting real data.